Monday. We're last week of August now, I think. Me and Robert have just been and collected a couple of spreaders. We couldn't get our normal ones from David, so uh, he put us in contact with another man down the road. We've got a couple Richard Weston ones this time. Never used them before. Uh, it's not a lot of differences about them. They're pretty nice machines. They're, uh, they all got these covers that covers the lights. And when the doors go up, the lights get covered. They're pretty much the same inside. They, uh, the only difference, as I can see, is they had a chain in the middle and had two slats. But these have only got one slat. They should be about the same. They should hold us about the same. We got them for a couple of days. We're hoping to get as much done here as we can. We've got the big field here. We've got the railway field. Uh, this is called Long Meadow, this one. Farmer's been and harvested and uh, combined. Keithy's waiting to get on with cultivation. So the moment we get uh, the muck on, Keithy then gets on with the uh, cultivations across here. Two days we should be done. There's a muck heap here. There's another one on the other side. This is pheasant muck, so this has to go on thin. It's very, very potent. Young Andrew's here helping out today. Farmer's got a load of lorries coming in for oats and straw and other things like that. So young Andrew's running on the digger. He's been in helping here, there and everywhere this winter, uh, this summer. Uh, been quite handy actually, you know, when you need another driver or whatever. He's good on digger. Got to be ever so careful when you're loading the digger. See where he wants me. Anyway, pheasant muck going on <laughs> in there. You don't want to be out there, it stinks. But yeah, there's, um, they're both set the same at the moment. There's a dial there, you can speed up the bed, slow the bed down. Uh, for your application you want it set to a happy medium you know you don't want it absolutely chuck you know if you well it depends what you want if you want to blur you know chuck it out you can that is quite a smell that even in here I can smell that so young Andrew will load us all day and then tidy up the pad afterwards so it's nice and level level with the field you don't want to be scooping up the mud so it's, it's a little bit more difficult than you uh, realize so anyway he's a good kid just started his own business uh, with uh, paddocks and stuff like that so on the odd occasion he's got a bit of free time and uh, yeah it's just like a man for hire he's got his own little tractor and stuff like that he's um, yeah very handy to uh, handy to have about around our area so yeah going twice as fast as we normally would with uh, normal muck and not spreading it so thick so we'll be doing uh, twice as wide as well so uh, you don't want any overlap you just want literally a very thin covering if you put too much on you will know about it because all your corn will be flat so there we go hopefully we do a nice job here yeah we're trying to lay this down as thin as possible so we're doing about 14k which is you well, more than twice the speed you'd normally go i'll put you on my head so you can see what i'm doing first thing you always do is to turn the rotors on we're, on, we're set on a thousand speed, so it's easier for the tractors to turn the uh, rotors at a thousand. When you're on 540, they're sort of geared down a bit, so... Uh, so, anyway. When they're set, when the uh, rotors are set on a thousand, you're less likely to brush, break a shear bolt as well. But uh, I don't know what the reason for that is, versus manufacturer, but... These are set at a thousand, so we... We put it at a thousand on here. We open the doors. We're going halfway with the doors. Somewhere there. And then uh, you simply run the bed into, uh, lock the, uh, the spool on. And then you want to get up to speed as quick as you can. If you're struggling for power, we could always go to a thousand. Struggling with that. That'll be going on a bit thick there. Go out of eco. Need to be up at 14k really, but can't seem to get there. That's bad. 
sana. We just have the door shut down so not, you know, so not so much is hitting the rotors at the same time. So just spreads it a little bit thinner. These quite long runs as well, so. But once me and Robert have done this field, Keith will be here with the discorator. I don't know when he'll be here, be here shortly. I'd have thought this is probably the last run down this side. Just want to start a cover into the last row, so. As we get to the end, as the muck starts running out, it starts coming out the spreader, a tiny bit slower, so to compensate, you just come down a gear. You know, you want, you're looking in the mirror all the time, try and see how much material's coming out. You want it to always be the same. And then uh, you're always looking for the rotors at the back. Once you see the rotors spinning, you want to shut your door down to the muck below it so uh, you don't get any fling back of stones or anything like that. They're pretty simple to use, easy to use. As long as you do everything in the right order. If you, if you muck up the order, you'll have a bad day. Starting to thin out now, so come down one gear. And when we get to the end, we shut the bed off somewhere here, just slow down, then shut the door down, then a little bit more is going to come out as it clears its doors. So you just sort of slowly move forward with it, slow the rotors down, rotors are always last to turn off. Didn't leave myself much room there, did I? And then knock the rotors off, you don't want to be flinging. That's as, that's as uh, much as it will get there. You don't want to be putting any more on farmers ever so worried about it going down. We might even still, you know, me and Robert never done this before. We're just putting it on as thin as we can uh, to try and cover one load in one pass because it's quite a big pass. So we're doing our best here. And it's still, might, that still might be too much. Hopefully it isn't. Come tomorrow or the next day, the combine will be running again and uh, everything will be full swing straw again. And yes, the farmers just loading a couple of straw lorries. They've got a couple of oat lorries coming in. They're coming in for those oats. They want those. Um, not as good a price as last year, but there's plenty of oats about. So the farmer wants them gone. You know, if they can be, they can be a pain to move if they're no good. So, but the mill's happy with them. They're happy to come and collect them. They're getting 29 ton on the load, which is, uh, you know, it's always a good, uh, um, it's always good news when you can get that sort of weight on a lorry because they can be light. And I think Alistair's are pretty much, you know, in the same sort of uh, league. I'll get some, uh, I'll get some proper information about those before they come. We are nearly loaded here. Anyway, we've got a couple of days of this, uh, so we're going to get the muck on. The next heap's a little bit bigger. We, um, it's, uh, it's all cow muck, so we spread that on a little bit thicker. Yeah, in about a week's time, we'll find ourselves on the cultivator because Kiki uh, and Farm will have to go off uh, hedge trimming. And yes, that's just, uh, they have to go around the fields where we ain't got headlands. So yeah, we can't cultivate them until we've trimmed the, uh, the hedges and back. So uh, they go off and do that they also do the dry land down up more where uh, that tends to flood so they get down there while it's drying and uh, get a bit of hedge trimming done down there as well so me and Rob have been going you know we've been doing about six meter spread so it's worked out pretty nice uh, not too thick we have just got to now try and figure out where we are 
hunting down those. So you do uh, two passes between the tram lines, that gives you a six metre spread. Uh, last year we used the GPS's to do it, but there was really no need. You could see the straight drill rows from that, um, that sphere of working. Yeah, that did really well. Um, so well, Farmer actually is uh, going to buy another one. That'll be a video for another day. Just open it the doors halfway. Right, need two hours for this bit. Put our start driving, put our bed into gear, and up the gear as we go. We're doing about 14k, which is way faster than you'd normally drive. But uh we need this nice and thin. There's our Roberts Pass. I think they're going to run some small bales, some barley straw. We haven't got any small bale barley straw. So you get to see uh, the small bale might have one more run out before we put that away. Daisy will be running that. She did a much better job on the last one. And uh, just for going a bit slower, it makes such a nice job. Uh, I'm going to actually run back up beside myself there just because spreaders have way scales you know and all sorts on we uh, we don't need any of that here <laughs> farmer said he's at it where they've been uh, spreading pheasant mutt and it's brought the crop down because it's just so much uh, nitrogen in it just makes the crop grow too fast and then gives you other problems uh, later on near harvest next year so hopefully we don't do that Moving on to some cow muck now. We uh, we haven't heaped this pile up like we usually do. We usually heap it all into one big condensed heap and you get some really good quality muck then. It goes all black and soil-like. It nearly goes, well, it pretty much is soil again. The the muck is always much better once it's uh, it's been heaped up and uh, it just concentrates in the middle, you know get all the extra on top and it sort of shrinks and down uh, and it, it does it fast as well it does it quick you know um, I think some people say not to heap it up but we, we always do we always prefer it and uh, the, the spreaders do a better job spreading it you know you get a load of fluffy straw and it's no good you know it just comes out in fluffy lumps and uh, not so these spreaders they're, they're well, to me, I, there are much difference uh, I can see, but that's uh, different to the other ones we usually have. But they're lovely, lovely machines, just as the other ones are. So, yeah, I don't know what a machine like this would cost. I bet it's upwards of 40 grand. I, well, I can guarantee it, can't I? Um, really nice. We just don't warrant one. We only, you know, we use them. If, if you're owning a machine like this, you've got to rent them out to make them worth, you know, having. But yeah i don't know unless you just bought one for yourself but it'd have to be you know that'd be a very fancy you know you uh you only do three or four days of muck spreading per year so you just you can't warrant having one so it usually ends up being you know one or two people around you have a muck spreading you hire them off them um, but yeah that comes with its own problems as soon as you start hiring stuff you don't know who's on it you don't know who's using it um, you know we like to look after kit you know it doesn't matter whose it is uh, we, we, look, we 
we like to try and look after stuff so at the end me and Robert will spend a good couple of hours just uh, scraping them all off getting them back how they were when they come so yeah but they're you know lovely bits of kit and um, I'll just show you one more run with the uh, thing we'll be on well, 100% sure we'll be at it after the day tomorrow as well. Putting it on quite thick with um, cow muck, so just literally you look down your line just as it starts to fizzle out, that's where you want to be overlapping. Uh, and it gets a good dollop then. On goes the uh, rotors at the back. Then we spin them up, thousand speed. And we open the doors. It'll all go right to the top this time. And then select our starting gear. We're doing about 5k. So we slow down. I've just put this lever into work. That's constantly pumping now, which moves the bed back, pulls all the all the muck to the back of the uh, spreader. And let's see if I can get you a better picture. You can't get close outside because just so dangerous. I can't see much of a difference in the spread pattern. The um, the man we borrowed them off said, uh, you know, he thought they were a better spread, and they might be, you know. We haven't done enough on it, really. But um, it's doing, you know, doing a lovely job. Exactly how you want it to be. You don't want big, thick lumps. Uh, you want it in nice, fine, small pieces. Which it is, most of it. Bob's just about to make a start. And it's all, it's all to help the soil structure. It's all to feed next year's crop. I can hear a rock in there. Not a good noise. Oh, whatever it was has come out. Sometimes they'll jam up in the bottom of the rotors and then you've got from it has been <laughs> where it's rained, it's all in the things. We've had an inch of rain in the last 24 hours. And you wouldn't know. Oh, it's a little bit moisture there now. But everything's all cracked and it's just gone down the cracks. Ah, oh, spread is done. Right, there we go. That's a little bit of spreading. We'll uh, we'll pick it up when we're next on something else, but we're going to finish this heap off. Right, I'm just going to quickly show you this. We've got some... Uh, this is uh, going to be stinky. But, if you look at this, this is some uh, an old pile of muck which has just literally been left and left and left um, they've never got around to spreading it and it's literally gone back to uh, compost that's what it goes back to if you leave it long enough in a heap uh, it will revert back nearly to well it is 99% soil you know uh, still good for the soil so we're still going to put it on top but yeah just shows you what it goes back to I don't know if I can grab Oh. So it is just like a like a compost. Still stinks as well, so plenty of goodness in there still. Anyway, it comes out really powdery, so uh, you just, uh, your bouts are a little bit thinner, but we nearly finished this field. We've just got a couple of bouts here around the headland, and then we've done everything we wanted to do. Keithy's just got here with a cultivator. Daisy's here with a mole. We're gonna have a look at that quickly. Look at this. Oh, 
it's lovely, isn't it? Hey. It's open now. What are you done to my uh, machine? What are you done to your one? I just serviced it, put new points on it. Thank you. For you. Thank you. What happened to the other one? It's got a crack. What? Where it attaches? What round here? All round there, crack. What's there? And your one's cracked all round there, is it? Right, this, well, that this side works. It's cracked and it was opening up. It started cracking down that gusset plate as well. Oh right. It's cracked underneath. Is it? So I could gingerly oh. get it home. Every time you picked it up, with the crack opened up. Really? That's They're heavy old one, things, aren't they? This one's been you know, plated there, there. Yeah, it's there, been, been strengthened there. up, isn't it? Another one we had before that when it just broke. That yeah. Did exactly the same crack. Really? Oh dear. There we go. Some welding work to do that. Which is on the case. Is it? Yeah, we've got. There's a guy down the road. His name's Richard. He, uh, he's, he's good round the metal, any Kiwi. Yeah. Uh, got some new points on there then? Yeah, I just put them on. Sweet. Oh, Watch they don't fall off. Fat, yeah. So I have had them fall off. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I like bet. Are they any different to your other ones, or? No, the points are just the same. These are bigger, aren't they? These shins. Yes, they're a little they bit bigger. The leg more. Yeah, they wrap around the leg more. A lot more metal on them than that. Yeah. The others only sort of stop there. Oh really? Yeah. Yes, this is a job of screwing up. So you say, on a dry year, that tool does just the same job as a plough, don't you? In terms of yeah, loosening up soil. Yeah, it breaks all the soil up. It's about nine inches. Nice and white, yeah. You can end up... There we go, look at that. Dig right there, it's broke up right there. That's where you want to be. That, that sends the water where it wants to be, doesn't it? Well, it breaks all the subsoil up. It's water there too. Last year, they, when the ground's wet, they tend to slip the ground rather than lift it and break it up. Yeah, this is perfect though, isn't it? The way yeah. it's breaking up here. Yeah. Last year, it was, uh, we were doing this... Wet. Yeah, it was. It was wet and it just doesn't do the same job, does it? No. So, Keithy's been at it. You've been at it, what, three weeks now, haven't you? Yeah, Getting on, well. really. Yeah. So, we're nearly caught up with the combine, nearly, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's all done in the good, isn't it? Yeah, we're done in the dry. Yeah. And also, all the muck on there is getting mixed in with the disc. You just cut it up and mix it in, and the, then the worms and all the rest of it start pulling it in, don't they? Yeah. And um, winter wheat going here, isn't it? So we're getting this prep. Got a good, you know, this is perfect, isn't it? It's exactly how you want to see it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Drill man or sort it, don't you worry. We'll let it weather for a bit and then uh, we're going earlier with the wheat this time, aren't we? We're going to put it in earlier. Just see if we can get it going a bit quicker and get it on top of something. No. Does a lovely job that tool. Ever so heavy. So Keithy was just telling me we've got two, and the uh, the other one has got a um, some uh, just from use. Uh, you know where it's been welded together. It's all starting to crack around the welds. So we're going to have to uh, send it to local man. Good with good with metal. His name's Richard. Um, Otmore Ironworks. He uh, hopefully fingers crossed he sorts it out for us because he's ever so good with it. So anyway, Daisy's out there somewhere. She's out there with a the mole. We'll try and catch up with her before we leave. Daisy's up the field doing some uh, mole plowing. I'll show you what it does. When she comes back, I'll show you the mole. She's uh, she's just doing the worst of the um, the worst part. We did these all these fields last year. So we're just doing the worst ends of the fields again, uh, just to help things out. It was ever so wet last year, so uh, we just want to make sure that uh, everything's drained well basically what it is is you're pulling a big we call it a mole but you can see the hole down there and she's just she's only just put it in here so 
as it goes in it goes right down deep and basically you're covering all the drains that run across the field the field has drains set in there with shingle on top and you're basically running a little channel across the drains and then all the water can find its way to the drains and it's, it, you know on the heavy land this is heavy dirt this is you know it's not the worst we've seen we've got worse than this but uh this is considered heavy dirt for us on the heavy dirt we got to uh, we got to get the water away if you can get the water away you know it's job done it's easy huh. it's not easy but that's it, it it's the main issue that we have is standing water and you can see this whole area here this green area is literally where water stood all winter so we have uh we've dug a drain in the other side and fingers crossed it's just going to help this year they've got a few uh, uh a new load of bees turned up so uh i'm not sure whose those are but uh yeah they're a welcome site you know bees are a welcome site but daisies anyway it's a slow job this one 6k up the field she's using the gps to keep the lines nice and straight so uh, that actually helps with the uh, drainage as well if you've got a curvy wine it's um doesn't do the job as a straight line so i think these are set at 2.8 she i can't remember the optimal set and you could go a little bit you know wider but you also got to cover the ground as well so uh yeah that steering kit does a lovely 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 job with that and uh it's rare you get to see the actual drain so i just i just dug out down there and you can see literally that channel will run all the way across the field and then every time there's a field drain it will run through that and then the water then can run into the field drain and then run down into the ditches and then it's uh, heading away from the field then and uh, that just keeps the field uh, it stops water sitting on top of the field so we'll have a little look when she comes back See on the end uh, the, the mole or the expander. I'm gonna make the bees angry now and they'll bite me. This bit here, this bit here is called the expander. That's the bit that makes the tunnel. That is hot. That's warm to the touch. Anyway, let it crack on. Sorry. Oh, bees. See? There we go. And that's simple as that. It's a, it's a, it's a slow, boring job. I've got to get out of these bees. She's, uh, she might have just uh, got the beehives just here, so they, uh, they're not too keen on me being around here. Ah! Ah, bees. Right. Yes, that was an idea. I thought that might happen. Ah! Oh dear, bees are a good thing. You know, uh, they're just looking after the hive. So, no issues there. They don't like the noise of the tractors. This is a wet area, so she uh, she's going to get through all this area. She's going to do this next field, which is a wet field. And she's got some others around the area to get on with as well. Always leaves a little hump where the mole goes in. Uh, that can't be helped, I'm afraid. And Keithy always uh, always starts with a mole, then a cultivator, and then uh, we let it weather for as long as possible. We let it green up so all the weeds and uh, last year's crop or whatever volunteers volunteers are the crop that we didn't collect in the uh, combine so we let all those grow we want as much as that to grow as we can before we go seeding winter wheat and then uh, and then we uh, we want to uh, break the soil down into a nice till that we can drill into for winter crops it doesn't need to be crazy crazy fine uh, because it's going to have all winter to sit there and the plants are going to grow and blah 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 anyway it's important the moling is really important for us that's an important job there is moling every year to do daisy doesn't mind sitting on there you know 
usually we've got two moles running but we're out of tractors at the minute me and Robbo are spreading Keithy's disc uh farmers farmers trying to combine as well and uh yeah you just run out of tractors in the end that will do it for the day but thanks very much for watching make sure you like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one cheers